90% of me thinks that that is a actual, like you found that, but then the 10% of me is pushing me the other direction. Welcome to Experience Points, presented by our friends at Avtex, who transform customer experience through CX design and orchestration. On Experience Points, contestants earn points by answering customer experience questions and share their insight on how to make your interactions remarkable. Those points turn into dollars for the charity of their choosing. I'm Dan Gingis. And I'm Joey Coleman. And we'd love to introduce you to today's contestant. The incomparable, the fabulous, the incredible, Jesse Cole. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesse Cole is the founder of Fans First Entertainment. He's the owner of the Savannah Bananas baseball team. He's also the author of Find Your Yellow Tux, How to Be Successful by Standing Out. And he and his teams have welcomed over 1 million visitors to their ball games over the years. Jesse, welcome to Experience Points. I am fired up, Joey. And Dan, this is a big moment for me, being a part of a game show, something I've hoping for since I was in middle school. So thank you for this opportunity. I, I have to point out just the, the coincidence that you happen to be wearing the same outfit as in your picture. Did you, did you <laughs> plan that, Jesse? I planned it, especially game show day, 100%. I love it. I love it. Well, we are thrilled to be able to make your middle school dreams come true, Jesse. Uh, so excited to have you here with us today. All right, so Jesse, you have chosen a special charity that you are going to be playing for today. Can you tell us what that charity is and why did you decide to play for them? Uh, Savannah Chatham County uh, Casa, it is something that's near and dear to me and Emily's heart and the foster child, uh, um, you know, the whole world of foster children. And for us, uh, I started working with this group when I first came to Savannah and I actually emceed and hosted some events for them and uh, excited to do something for them hopefully today and win a few points and a few dollars. That's outstanding. All right, well, we are going to be playing Fake or Fact today. In Fake or Fact, examine three similar experiences. Some are real, some are not. Your task is to determine the fake from the fact. Each experience correctly detected is worth 100 points. Three correct answers will earn you 200 bonus points for a possible score of 500 points. Let's do it. All right, Jesse, let's get into the game. So today we're gonna to be talking about something that I think you might have come across in your time leading the wonderful Savannah Bananas, and that is the Hutzler 571 Banana Slicer. You <laughs> need, ladies and gentlemen, the banana slicer that allows you in one fell swoop to cut your bananas into all the necessary pieces. Now, to be honest, Jesse, this is a real product. You can find it on Amazon, and shockingly enough, it has almost 6,000 reviews. What we're going to do today is show you three potential reviews. Now, these may be fake or they may be fact. You're going to get a chance to see this <laughs> review. And then we're going to ask you whether you think the reviews are fake or fact. All right. So the first review comes from Emily S. It is a five-star review that reads, We were so excited to get our Hutzler 571 until we realized that our bananas curved the wrong way. Gonna have to go to the store for new bananas. That's review number one. Review number two is a one-star review that reads from Jen, two thick slices. Could have done it with a knife. And last but not least, our final five-star review from Xenia, which reads, if you are ever worried about having to go back to the tedious chore of slicing bananas with a knife, fear no more. The Hutzler 571 Banana Slicer will never fail you, even in a power outage. Although it tends to sit idle more often than not, it gives the ambiance of my junk drawer a certain je ne sais quoi that's essential for a junk drawer that will impress everyone. Now, Jesse, those are the three potential reviews. Now it's time for you to decide which ones are fake or fact. The first one, the five-star review that mentioned, oh no, we need to go out and get some different bananas because ours are curved the wrong the way. Jesse, do you think that's fake or fact? Crazily, I'm gonna go with fact. Excellent, fact. Tell us a little bit about your reasoning, if you would, Jesse. 
because <laughs> it's so ridiculous that I think someone with how many, how many reviews? Views six thousand reviews. Six thousand uh, reviews. Someone probably would say that. So I'm gonna go with a fact. All this right. guy does know his bananas, Joey. He does know his bananas, ladies and gentlemen. We definitely are doing our best to pick questions for the contestant here at Experience Points. All right, Jesse, you said fact, and indeed, ding, 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 you are correct. This is a true review that actually included photos as well of the family that bought the Hutzler 571 holding their banana facing the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> the banana slicer. Oh my goodness, I absolutely love it. All right, let's go to our second review. This was the one-star review that basically had the punchline, I could have done it with a knife. Um, I'd like to retire after my first one. You know, one for one, I think that is it. Um, you know, fashion. true story, Jesse, I once coached a, a kid's basketball team and I won the game and then I retired. And, and so I have a perfect 1,000 average. Finish on top, finish yeah. on top. So on that note, see you guys. This was a great, great, great show. Thank you for playing, fake or fact? Uh, let's go with fact. All right, Jesse's gonna go with fact on this one as well. Jesse, why are you thinking this one's a fact? What are you thinking? Uh, uh, zero reasoning. Zero reasoning, okay, great. <laughs> Trust in your gut, you're going with fact. All right, Jesse, I've got some news for you. You got another one right! This is also a factual review of the Hutzler 571. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, sometimes the one-star reviews actually help you because they let a, lend a little bit of credibility to the nature of your product. And I think anybody who reads this review and says, could have done it with a knife, well, no kidding. Everyone cuts their banana <laughs> with a knife. That's why you buy the Hutzler 571 banana slicer. All right, Jesse, we're two for two. We're going into the home stretch here. You're round in third, our third and final review. This is another five-star review that refers to the je ne sais quoi of the junk drawer. Jesse, do you think this one is fake or fact? How do you think that? So here's my thought process. I'm not really studying the reviews. I'm studying you guys. So would you actually... <laughs> See, half of me, half of me thinks you would go all three facts and find all those, and then the other me like that's a little too much. But then, would you put the time and effort to write that fake review? So these are the things that are going on in my head right now. I love it. So you're you're really playing the the host as opposed to playing the game. I like. I'm trying to do the best I can, and so ninety percent of me thinks that that is a actual like you found that. But then the 10 percent of me is pushing me the other direction you Ooh. would say all three facts uh, i'm gonna say false and i'll be wrong but i'm gonna say false and i'll be wrong but i'm hoping false could be right all right so to make sure we understand your <laughs> you think that this review even though 90 percent you felt that it was fact you're gonna trust your 10 percent instinct and go with this final review as being fake oh is this Jeez. always how you make decisions? Yeah, I, I always go. I, I go by ten percent. Um, uh, Genesis Qua. Yeah, I'm, yes. I, for some reason, I feel like Joey would write Genesis Qua. I feel like he would write that. So I'm gonna go fake, even though you guys probably got me. Yeah. So here's the thing, Jesse. You gotta trust your gut, brother. <laughs> this one is actually a true story. Yet another. Yeah factual review all right two out of three yes, for creative people two out of three i love it well let's let's talk a little bit about reviews jesse i mean you're a guy who works in the entertainment space i know reviews of the savannah banana baseball games are really important to increase ticket sales and people talking about it tell us a little bit about your philosophy on the importance of reviews and getting reviews yeah, I think you want to create a product that's remarkable that people want to talk about it. And uh, as soon as you talked about that negative review, I thought about uh, this one woman who wrote a four page uh, negative review blog about her experience with the bananas. And we have quoted that blog more times. We shared it on our podcast because everything that she was saying is too much like a circus. It's too loud. It's too crazy. There's always things going on. It's not like a typical baseball game. It was actually reaffirming who we are trying to be and who we are not for. So sometimes in reviews, you can look, the negative reviews that we get are often because we're so different than a typical baseball game. And that's okay. 
we actually shared the uh, negative reviews of the week on our podcast previously oh <laughs> as a gosh. joke, which was it. fun. So um, reviews are important, but you also got to remember it's such a small percentage of people and often sometimes the negative reviews. Um, I think they're a great opportunity, as you mentioned, to turn a negative into a positive. So we respond to every review uh, as an owner. We respond to them and look at those opportunities. But I, I think it's important to pay attention to, but not put too much weight into because it it's such a small percentage of the people that actually have an experience with you. Jesse, I love it. You know, one of the interesting things about negative reviews, there's some fascinating research out there that shows, especially in this world where online reviews have become such a regular part of every consumer's day-to-day -day life, that if you have a, a product on Amazon, for example, that you're selling, and it is only five-star reviews, mm -hmm. and you put that same product on Amazon, and you have five stars, but you have a bunch of one-star and two-star, the ones with the one star and two star review, that listing will actually sell better. And the reason it sells better is we have grown up in a skeptical era. We understand that five star positive reviews across the board are fictitious. That's not real. It's never going to happen that way. So lots of times business owners, they worry when they get the negative review. I love that you take it to the extreme and you actually use the negative review in your marketing materials. That's brilliant. And that's definitely the elite level play when it comes to review. But I think when we look at our reviews, we shouldn't beat ourselves up that we get a negative review. Now that being said, if the review points out something that is a legitimate negative critique, I personally look at that as gold from your yeah. clients, right? They've told you something that maybe you didn't know, or maybe they told you something that you knew, but that senior management wasn't buying into. Mm. And now you have a proof point. So I'm a big yeah. fan of getting reviews, whether they're positive or negative. Yeah, and if I can quickly jump on that, a negative review recently, Joey, uh, we had someone post a picture of one of our grilled chicken sandwiches and it looked like a char gold, it looked like a burger. It looked like it was so overcooked and I was embarrassed. So I talked to our team, found out what happened, that there was a miscommunication there, but I ended up sharing that picture on all my social media and said, I'm embarrassed, but here's the lesson that we learned from it. And I got more comments and support and, and people were like, oh, wow. You know, I, I think showing that, like you said, actually shows that you're a real person, human connection, real brand, that you're not just trying to hide everything. And I don't believe anyone should hide the negative comments, hide the negative reviews. That's who you are. And, and that's where you can really rise up and show, you know, what you stand for. Yeah, that's right, Jesse. And I, I've always said that companies should not be afraid of complaints because yeah. the people who make legitimate complaints generally do so because they care. They actually want you to resolve their problem. The bigger danger is the people that are upset with you that don't tell you and just leave and go to your yes. competitor, right? So somebody who takes the time to actually give you negative feedback Generally, I mean, there's some jerks out there, but generally they really just want you to know and they want you to fix it for them. And, and so, as Joey said, feedback is a gift, even the negative feedback. Yes. And if you're a remarkable brand, then you'll have your own customers and fans defending you even after a negative review. And that's I always tell our staff when someone says negative, wait, wait at least 30 minutes, an hour, see if people jump in first and then come into the conversation to see if people defend us. And that's that's been really powerful. Jesse, that is such awesome. a pro tip as well. You know, we're going to get negative reviews, but if we've done a good enough job of building our positive fan base, which as I know something that you do all day, every day your fans will jump to your defense. You know, the last thing I'll say when it comes to reviews is, if you don't have a system and a process in your business designed to generate reviews, you're yeah. missing out on a huge opportunity. You know, it used to be when online reviews first started that it was enough to sit back and just hope they would flow in. The smartest companies today actually have a strategy for seeking out reviews and they make it part of their operational process. They know when to ask for a review, they know how to ask for a review, and they actually have somebody in the organization who's responsible for that follow-up to make sure the reviews are coming in. Not only from a, you know, a general, here's a public review, but even just getting feedback from customers, the positive and negative, whether that's an internal survey or some type of a one on one conversation with the customer, we want to be listening to the voice of the customer as much as possible. And reviews are about one way to do that. And Can I, want to I ask a quick question? Yeah, please. What's the best way to ask for a review that you guys have seen? I was just going to give that pro tip, Jesse. The pro tip is find the spot in your customer journey where you know you're making your customers the happiest. And I'll give you an example. When I worked at Discover Card, we learned that customers were happiest with us the moment they redeemed their rewards because it was like they got free money in their pocket. So they loved Discover at that moment. 
we put in onto the website in the middle of the journey an opportunity to leave us a rating or a review on creditcards.com or whatever it is at that moment. And sure enough, a lot of people took advantage of it because they were happy with us at that point. So obviously with the bananas, you make people happy all the time. But even with you, find a spot in your journey where you know that, you know, 99 out of 100 times or even more, people are really excited and happy. And that's the moment to ask them. Cool. I think, I think timing is definitely key, Dan. The other piece I would add to that is going back to that system and structure of someone having responsibility for it. So think about one of your baseball games, Jesse. Obviously, I've had the pleasure of attending. They're a spectacle. It's amazing. It's wonderful. And when the game ends, people are in a heightened emotional state. Whenever your customer is in a heightened emotional state, we want to have someone in front of them right then and there to capture what's going on. So in a baseball scenario, you might put, you know, team members or staff members with cameras out, you know, and they can even just use their cell phone walking up to people and saying, hey, do you mind if we shot a quick one minute thing about what you thought about the game? Hmm. If you never use that in your external marketing, it produces good feedback for your team. And when you're able to get them in state, it dramatically increases the likelihood of a positive review. Dan, let's recap how Jesse did playing fake or fact. All right, Jesse. Well, you did a very good job playing Faker Fact. As you know, correct answers get you 100 points. You got two correct answers. So we did say there'd be no math on this show. So I'll do the math for you. That means that you earned 200 points. And the good news is, is that those points convert directly into dollars for the Savannah Chatham Casa organization. So you have earned $200 for your charity. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Should have been three out of three, but we'll do it. Close enough. You know, hey, everybody has a strike every once in a while. That's the way it works, friends. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes this episode of Experience Points. Check out more games with Jesse and other celebrity contestants at experiencepointsgame.com. That's experiencepointsgame.com. We'll see you soon for some more examples of remarkable experiences here at Experience Points, presented by Avtex. You doing anything exciting this morning? Uh, I took my car into the the shop and found out that there's a rodent chewing through the wires of my AC. How about you? Well, if you didn't live out in the country, you wouldn't have that problem. Oh, well, that's true. So we're, we're living in parallel universes today, John. I took my car in this morning as well. And, and so this was a timely episode because um, at the when I went to uh, pay for the repair, for the maintenance that was done on it, uh, I, I got the little hint about uh, you're going to be getting a review and, you know, uh, five stars would be great. You know, so they were kind of like teeing me up, planting the subliminal message about make sure you give us five stars. So everywhere you, everywhere you go, you're being asked for a review. Yeah, and you, you even see it, uh, you know, back when you know, people were leaving the house, right? But when people were traveling in Ubers, they're now hanging signs in the Uber, like, make sure you give me a five-star review. And, you know, when you have somebody come service your house or your refrigerator, you know, five-star review would be great, right? So that it's obviously ingrained into these into the workforce, but, um, you know, there's some compensation tied to that on the other side as well. Gosh, you know, you experience it with Uber. You experience, quite frankly, even with the airlines you fly. I, I remember uh, on a flight I was on, you know, before COVID, uh, and I happened to be sitting next to a Delta pilot. And, you know, I just I just asked him, because Delta had changed their uh, kind of policies or procedures a little bit where when the flight landed, the pilot would stand in the, you know, doorway to the, you know, to the cockpit and, and tell everyone, thank you for flying Delta. And, and I just thought that was an interesting change. And he said, well, uh, as pilots, they actually get to read all of the reviews on every flight that they captain. And, and they've determined, Delta's determined from the reviews, one of the things that creates a positive review is when the, the captain, you know, the head of the ship, so to speak, uh, you know, extends, you know, a sincere thank you to the passengers. So I thought that even, even pilots, are seeing their reviews on their flights.